Well, my name is Flo Mounier, and uh, I've been playing drums uh, for about 25 years now. Um, started playing professionally 23 years ago with a, a band that I've been with since uh, called Cryptopsy. <laughs> A band called Nader Sedek, which is uh, kind of a black metal meets death metal uh, vibe. Uh, also playing with Digital Doomsday. I uh, started listening to metal. Um, I think because because of the uh, of the drumming, because I figured that it looked to me or sounded to me like it was challenging. Metals changed quite a bit in the last 20 years, um, and if we want to just take one genre of metal, which is death metal, um, it went from being really kind of uh, normal tempo, I guess, mid tempo, 120 to you know maybe 160 tops, with really good elements of uh, of groove um, and actually melody and harmonies, uh, to something that is uh, how fast can you go uh, and how long can you sustain it. My approach to it is mixing both, trying to create a dynamic in a, in a song so that it becomes more uh, of a song and is not just fast. And when it is fast, you notice because it comes from slow or vice versa. Um, so musically, I'm kind of still in the um, old school way of thinking that a song is a song and it's got to be played that way. Um, the role of a, of a metal drummer, death metal drummer, extreme drummer, um, and in this I can only speak for myself, is of course, you know, laying the foundations and, you know, keeping uh, the time just like any drummer really does in any, in any style of music. Cryptopsy, there's a lot of um, tempo changes and a lot of riff changes. So my role is kind of bridging things to make it either obvious or to create traps. My setup has changed a little bit um, over the years. Um, and I think it has to do with um, the my awareness of the way my body functions. I brought my cymbals uh, down a little bit, um, angled them a little bit flatter, same thing with the toms. You know, I go from using two bass drums to one bass drum. Everything is kind of like, you know, fitted to where I can um, use energy in more of a dynamic way than spending it trying to find my, my kit. My kit has, uh, has become quite the hybrid kit um, because in this style of music, um, which is death metal or extreme metal, um, bass drums are 99% of the time triggered. And now I'm trying uh, the acoustic triggers on the snare drum as well, just to give a little bit um, more dimension and more um, um, versatile sounds because I'm doing different styles of music in, um, as well with different projects. TM2, which is incredibly uh, compact, uh, incredibly uh, effective as far as sensitivity and as far as picking up every hit. Triggering is, is is like a question that keeps on popping up in a lot of drummers. Is triggering good? Is triggering bad? Is it cheating? Is it? I mean, in a live context, if you don't have a sound guy with you that knows exactly what you want to hear from your bass drum sound, what your guitar player wants to hear, what your vocalist wants to hear, what your bass player wants to hear, what your keyboard player wants to hear, then chances are they're not going to hear anything but mud at speeds above you know 180. Um, so trigger is basically for death metal a way of getting that attack, that, that high end uh, from the kick drum to carry out and to be much louder so that everybody hears what's going on. It's a very, very, very good tool, um, especially for this kind of music, for clarity's sake, so that the audience also hears what's going on, what you're playing, because you know, if you're 
running that marathon, it's nice if people appreciate it and, and, and can hear what you're doing as well. So there's different um, you know, uses for triggers and, and, and now too with a hybrid kit like mine, when you have um, the bar triggers that can, you know, um, fire off samples and, and, and stuff like that, it becomes really um, important because it's not just a pad set aside or, or on, on a different stand that you have to, you know, put on a rag or carry along with you. It's, you can just put it on the existing drum or on the hi-hat stand or, you know, everything is, is fits more and more compact and is a lot more um, functional for the everyday metal drummer. Well, lately, uh, lately in studio, I've been um, utilizing the Roland KD-140 um, bass drum. Three to four, maybe five albums that I've been tracking is having an acoustic setup on top, so cymbals, toms, snare, um, and having the Roland kick drum as a bass drum. When you hit it, it makes uh, a very, very soft sound that's not necessarily picked up by the snare mic or the tom mics or the cymbal mics or the overheads and stuff like that. So if there's ever something to correct afterwards, it just makes it a lot easier um, to do. The bass drop incorporated in extreme metal is kind of like a kind of like a fad thing. I remember being on uh, on a tour about six years ago, and um, it was like a 20 band package that toured for six weeks. And one person, and I'm not gonna name any names or any uh, uh, names of the tour, one person had um, a bass drop in his um, um, SPD unit, this Roland SPD unit. And uh, he was just, you know, using it here and there as far as, you know, accenting punches or more grooves or or what have you. And by the end of the six weeks, I think that uh, 10 other drummers had purchased uh, a Roland SPD, SPDS, I think it was at the time. It sounds like that, that you can actually import into the technology and create by yourself that just give it, give the music a little extra edge. I mean, when you're playing along, like I do with the SPDSX, which is a sampling machine, which has tons of memory, and I could just um, live or when we rehearse have the click tracks, so everything is nice and structured, and have you know these like little samples come in, and it's just little additions, little um, little cherries on top of the Sunday that just make the music a little bit more aggressive, give it a little bit more feel, or just enhance it in general. best thing since sliced bread as far as I'm concerned and as far as a lot of other working metal drummers will find out quite soon. Um, just the fact that it's so practical because of its size. Why would anybody, you know, want to use or carry around this huge heavy rack mount um, to trigger, you know, let's say just bass drums when you can trigger bass drums and other things, samples, and do whatever you want in a very, very small unit. Super smooth, KT10 pedal. Wow, um, a pedal, just a pedal you can put anywhere because there's no stands involved. Effects, uh, I do um, a little um, clave thing, uh, ostinato pattern in some of the solos that I do. Um, and it's perfect for that, just because you can fit it anywhere, just because you can put any sound you want. The feel has, is, is amazing um, for an electronic pedal, and it's adjustable, so um, it can be used for pretty much, you know, whatever your imagination has, uh, has planned for you. Well, if I had any suggestions for, you know, metal players or players in general, it would just be to, um, to work hard. I mean, if, if your goal is to make a career out of this, or if your goal is just to keep on playing because you love playing, then there's nothing that should um, stop you from doing that. Um, the technology is definitely out there um, for players to have a lot of fun and do exactly what they want. Um, and, you know, if, if, if I can go back to the TM2 for a second, 
the fact that it's so affordable as well makes it open for you know anybody to use.